be long. Right. I've always wanted to be a nurse. I think most nurses have their own favourite sort of nursing. Mine is working on the children's ward. Hello, Harvey Ward. Yes. That's John Vauxhall. OK, thank you. Bye-bye. New patients are sometimes a bit worried when they first come into the hospital. So it's part of my job to help them settle in. One of the nicest things about being a nurse is being able to help other people. Mrs. Fox. Have you got this yellow skin? Yes. You're John. Yes. Do you have your case? I'm going to go just down here. Thanks. Thank you. There are lots of different things we've got to know about John so that we can be sure of looking after him properly. But at first, he's bound to find everything a bit strange. How far to come? Litchfield. That's a long way. Do you want to start getting him undressed then? Right. For the doctor. I'll take this off you, brilliant. Can I have sure. John's full name, Mrs. Foxall, please? John Edwin Foxall. His address. John's mother answers all the questions about his past medical history. We need to know if he's had any illnesses like measles or chicken pox. Do you want to come with me late, John? Can you just pop this in your mouth? While I'm weighing John, I take his temperature and his pulse to make sure he's not suffering from an infection. We mustn't overlook even the smallest detail. Should we come and see how tall you are, John? We like mums to come in with their children, even if they can't stay all the time. Four feet. What are you going to be, a footballer? Yeah. What team? Aston Villa. Not very good. Hello, John. The doctor has come to give John a further examination. John's mother will stay with him during the examination. The doctor may have some more questions he wants to ask. So if John has forgotten the answers, mother is sure to remember. Can we lie down, please? Thank you. It's nice and comfortable, isn't it? Any pain in moving? Yeah. Any pain here? No. Well, tell the doctor if it hurts, won't you, John? Yeah. Just try and relax a little bit and keep your arms. Touching you here? No. John has come into hospital for something a bit unusual. He has had a problem with the muscles in his ankles for some time. If we don't operate now, he could have some difficulty walking properly when he's older. When you squeeze it. When you squeeze it, yes. This is your bed, John. Take your slippers off and hop on. Do you want to start putting these things away, Mrs. If you want to go to the toilet, it's over there on the left-hand side. I think perhaps the most difficult few moments of a child's stay in hospital is when he first comes into the ward and he doesn't know exactly what to expect. His mother is as anxious as he is, so it's very important that the nurse who greets them tries to make them both feel as much at home as possible. Put your soldiers here, John. Now, this is on your bed because you can't eat anything until you go to the theatre. All right. And you can't have anything to drink either because otherwise you'll be very sick when you come back. So you won't go around taking anything, will you? It's right. a good boy. I'll introduce you to the other children later on. Yes. Give them a kiss. Thank you. John won't feel lonely for long. His mother will be back to see him this afternoon. Nurse! Okay, all right. If any of the boys and girls have to stay in bed and can't get out to the toilet, the bedpan is brought in. We usually treat this as a bit of a joke, but you soon get used to it.
to school today. We always try and put children of the same age groups together so that they can play and talk. So it isn't long before John makes friends. Children are always allowed to bring in their own favourite toys or books. Lunch is always a busy time for us, so we're delighted to see parents helping out with their own children. This keeps them happy and helps make the child stay in hospital more and more like home. No, no, no. You sit here on my knee. The ones who are still in bed will have their meals taken round to them. These children are getting better now. Most of them will be home in a day or two. Being a nurse can be hard work. You can see why, even though I like it, I still look forward to a break. You put on another one. <laughs> It's a bit ridiculous every quarter of an hour. Yeah, we just want to bracket it together yeah. and say feeding babies. But you don't. You start something, and then you have to stop in the middle of it, and then you have to start something else. Yeah. So you can't say two minutes with one child, then five minutes mm. with another child. When nurses get together, even during tea breaks, we still tend to talk shop, talk about what we're doing for the patients, and what the doctors have said. <laughs> it's very hard to get away from work when you're still on the ward. Oh dear, I don't suppose I'll get any passengers today either, he sighs sadly. Yet he still puffs up a large white cloud of smoke and sets off on his journey. Richard's mother has been here most of the day reading him stories. It's all right for some, but it's nice for me to see him content and happy. We like parents to come in as often as possible, but we really get to know the children best when we see them by themselves. After crossing a bridge over a river, Chap Chap soon reaches the countryside. Before John goes for his operation, he is dressed in this gown. It's been specially cleaned so that there are no germs on it. All the theatre staff will be wearing special gowns too. He'll be going soon. You all right? Yeah. You're not nervous, are you? No. My sister and I check that little bracelet we gave you this morning. We gave John this bracelet when he first came in. His name is written on it. All the boys and girls have one. It's just our way of making sure everybody knows who he is. We've got to be very careful when giving out medicines. So, sister is always there to check. This medicine I'm going to give John is a special one which will make him feel very sleepy and when he wakes up, his operation will be over. Close your eyes. <laughs> you are swallowed. Is it nice? Mm. So do you want to lie down now? That's it. You go a bit sleepy after that. All right. John's mother has returned. She's glad that he's being well looked after. The next time she sees him will be after his operation. While John grows sleepy, other children are having their lessons. They can't go to school, so a teacher comes to them. If you've got an O in the word, you've written R O M M A. Now what do you put on the end to make it into O? Into Rome. You put what with that so it's a magic E on the end and that makes the O into O. Okay? That's fine. Right, now go and read that to yourself and I'll come round in a minute. Go and sit down. Okay? Most of the children like having lessons with their new friends. It gives them something to do and it means we get a bit longer to spend with the younger children. That's why you use square paper to start with, okay? Not all children coming into hospital come for operations. Some are in hospital just for a few days. Others stay longer. I get to know them all and their relations too.
When did he tell you that? Um, he told Mama. There are lots of people working in a hospital apart from doctors and nurses. The porters do an important job, fetching and carrying patients from one part of the hospital to another. John is going to be taken down to the operating theatre by two porters and a nurse. He'll be away from the ward for most of the afternoon. When he comes back, his mother will be waiting for him. Dressing and put a nice little one on. All right. If it hurts a bit, you squeeze my arm. Robert had his appendix taken out three days ago. This is quite a common operation compared to the one John is going to have. Does it hurt? I have to wear this mask when changing Robert's dressing. Otherwise, unseen germs could pass through the air and infect the wound. Warren Farm? That's not very far, away, is it? In a couple of days, when the stitches have been removed, Robert will be able to go home. You went to school today? Yeah. What did you do? I've done some work about so. About what? So. So? Miss, is that St. Paul? Yeah. Hmm, I thought it was. How many times does he have to have that taken? Um, it's every four hours. Oh. Has he had a temperature? Okay. Though? Parents no, always like to know how their children are doing. So you've got to be ready to answer their questions. Being a nurse means that a lot of the work just seems to be routine, like taking temperatures. But even this is very important, because it can tell us how the patient is progressing. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How are you today? The next day, the consultant who operated on John comes round to see him. They're a bit bigger, haven't they? Can you lift this one up in the air? That's great. All right. And this one? Good lad. Uh, you know what to look for after an mm. operation. See if the toes are pink. Not That's blue. right. And if they are pink, what then? Um, you can't feel pulses, can you, under plaster? And then make sure they're warm. That's right, and they're pink. warm. And if you want to see whether there is enough perfusion, you just squeeze the pink toe under the nail. And if it returns immediately to pink, as it does there, then it's a good perfusion. The consultant what? is very pleased with John on his first day but it will be several weeks before his legs are out of plaster. But by then, the pain will have gone completely, and John will be able to walk properly again. Hello, young lady. One nurse couldn't do everything. It's all a team spirit on our ward. All of us work together, the doctors, the sisters, and the nurses. Are your feet feeling better? Mm. Aren't you very hungry? Yeah. Well, don't eat if you don't want it. I'd like to think that the children thought of me as a sort of older sister who is there to take care of them. It's not an easy job, but I think we all would agree it's a very rewarding one.